Psalm 23. A lot of people got too familiar with Psalm 23. They lose yes, the focus of Psalm 23. That's true. Most of you probably know Psalm 23 since when you were six years old. Yes, my heart. By heart. Old saints know Psalm 23. New saints know Psalm 23. Amen. Even unbelievers <laughs> know Psalm 23. Wow. Psalm 23. Wow. You can recite it by heart. Some people, Psalm 23 is the only prayer they're praying every day. Uh -oh. When they wake up, the Lord is my shepherd. That's the prayer they run through and they run out. <laughs> and they, when they come home, they run through it and they say the same prayer before they go to bed. That's all what they know. But a lot of people have lose the power, the the strength, the strength, the, the, the grace, the, 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 the glory that is in that psalm. David, the King David, is the author of Psalm 23. The topic of Psalm 23 is this. The Psalms of David. Every other Psalms in the Bible have their own topic. But the only topic that they gave to Psalm 23 is this. The Psalms of David. In just six verses in Psalm 23, mm. David described a year's journey of a sheep. Mm. Think about this. In just six verses in Psalm 23, it described a year's journey mm. of a sheep. Now, God gave this message to me a while back, and he gave it to me in three series. But because I don't have three series, I'm going to try to do this in one message. I'm going to try to teach this as much as I can. Okay. Help me, Lord. Help me, Father. David started with this. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. Yes. That was the introduction of Psalm 23. Throughout the Bible, Jesus always described believers as a sheep. That's right. And God is our shepherd. Yeah. It describes believers as a sheep while God is our shepherd. Yeah. So from, some, from verse 1, David was bragging about the awesomeness, awesomeness and the loving character of God. He was bragging about how good this shepherd is. Yeah. He was bragging. He was so confident. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I start to think, why did David get to this conclusion? Because to start a statement with that, that means something has happened. Mm -hmm. He got to, how, why did David get to the conclusion with all confidence that the Lord is my shepherd? Then I said, I said, I said, let, let, let's go back to Psalm 22. And Psalm 22 contrasts what Psalm 23 says. Okay. Psalm 22, look at Psalm 22, verse 1. Look at this, check this out. Check out your, your, your Bible by this. The Bible says, David said, My God, my God, why art thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from me? And from the words of my rolling. Psalm 22, the way David started Psalm 22, he was in a panic mode. Mm -hmm. But when he got to Psalm 23, he had a confidence like nobody else. Yeah. He went from God, why have you forsaken me? To God, he's my shepherd. Mm -hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. I said, God, what, what was happening? How can he go from a panic mode and all of a sudden he jump to a confident statement? How can he go from asking God if you don't save me? God, you are all that I have. And I start to read. And when you keep on reading chapter 22, which I encourage you to read, you will see that David was facing a problem like no other. He was in a turmoil. 
His enemy went against him. Everything he tried to do was not working out. He cried and he cried. He sought for help and nobody was able to help him. He was in agony. He was in pain. He was looking for way out. And all of a sudden, something happened again in Psalm 22. He started to praise God. He started to worship God. He said, God, I will give you my praise. And he said, everybody, praise God with me. Because it's, I'm like, how? Come on, this, David, why are you putting me through all this? You put me up and down. He went from pain, but there was something I found in verse 4 and verse 5 of Psalm 22. Verse 4, verse 5 says, verse 4 says, Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and that delivered, that this delivered them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and was not confounded. Yes. Now it clicked for me. Now it clicked. The testimonies of his parents, even though David did not receive what he, he was praying for, even though David, what he was praying for has not yet materialized, it was the testimony of his parents that gave him the confidence to praise God at the end of 22 mm -hmm. and to declare at verse 1 of 23 that the Lord is my shepherd. Wow. Amen. Watch this, watch this. And the Spirit of God started opening my eyes. Listen to this. Okay. Somebody's going to catch this and somebody's going to catch what they get on. The Spirit of God, listen, a lot of folks, a lot of parents, we pray for our kids. Yes. That is very good. A lot of parents teach the word of God to their kids. That is very good. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents make their kids come to church. That is very good. Mm -hmm. But it is so solemn that parents testify of the goodness of God on their, to their children. Yes, you're right about that. Amen. Amen. Your teaching, your kids is good. Your praying for your kids is good. Your, your, your bringing them to church is good. But there's nothing that can last your kids in the time of trouble unless they know that God is good to you. That's yes. right. That's right. If they don't know that God is good to you, they will not know how God can be good to them. Amen. Listen, Amen. your kids can come to church. You watch this. Your kids can come to church and hear somebody else's testimony. But they don't know their life. They cannot relate to it. But we show our kids when we are in trouble. But really, did we tell our kids, this is how God brought me out. Amen. David's parents, they were able to tell David, listen, listen, God did this for us. Yeah. When we, our back was against the wall, it was not my wisdom that brought me out. Yeah. It was God that brought me out. Yeah. They testified to their kids. Yes. Okay. Watch this, watch this. Oh, somebody didn't get this. But let's watch this, watch this, watch this. In the book of Judges chapter 2, in the book of Judges chapter 2, the Bible says that after Joshua and his generation died, I encourage you to read it. Judges chapter 2, the Bible says after Joshua and his generation died, mm -hmm. there arose a generation that did not know God, okay. nor know what God did for them. And because they did not know God, and they did not know what God did for them, they sinned. Watch this. Joshua did not tell, and his generation did not tell the people of the testimony of God. They did not tell what God did for them. They did not tell their children. And because they did not tell, listen, in that, in, there were churches then, the kids got went to church. They prayed then, the kids prayed with them. They, 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 they sacrificed them, the kids sacrificed them, but they did not have the testimony yes. that God brought them out. Yes. And God says, because they did not have the testimony that God brought them out, that is why they rebelled against God. Oh. We tell our kids when we're going through trouble, but we never tell our kids. This is how God brought me out. Yes. 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 We tell our kids when there's danger on the road, but we can't tell, we need to tell our kids 
when I face the same danger, mm. it is, this is the way God brought me out. Mm. You know, we, we, we make everything, we say everything, but we never mm. told them the testimony of the goodness mm. of God. It was the testimony of the goodness of God that David, that David knew and David had in him when he was faced with life difficulties. He was able to confidently say, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. I was in a wedding last month. I was in a wedding last month. Um, and because I was the officiant in the wedding, I was in their rehearsal. Okay. And when I got to the rehearsal, an older lady, she probably 80 something years old, mm. she walked up to me. She said, She said, Danny, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing very well. He said, I just want to say something to you. I said, Okay. He said, Your parents are really blessed. Mm. I said, Thank you. She said, Let me see it again. Your parents are really blessed. I said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> then she said it all the time. Your parents are really blessed. I said, okay, what am I going to say? Let me say, I'll put it together. Th I know, thank you. <laughs> she said, no, 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 you don't get it. You didn't ask me why I said it. Okay. So I said, why do you say it? He said, your parents have 10 kids. I said, yes, we, they did. Yeah, they do, right? He said, yes, they do. Yeah. I, he said, but all those 10 kids, none of them is wayward. Wow. None of them is in jail. Wow. None of them is out of the church. Wow. Every one of them is still serving God. Oh, she right. said, I am, I am this old. I've never seen it happen. Wow. Not one out of ten. Yes. Ten kids, ten preachers. And I said, thank you. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. And I started to think about it. Mm. I started to think about it. Mm. I said, I was raised a preacher's kid. Okay. So I ran around the circle of preacher's kids until I grew up. Okay. And every preacher, just like my parents, mm. pray for their kids. Yeah. Every preacher, just like my parents, preach to their kids at home. Every preacher, just like my parents, make sure their kids are in the church. Okay. But this is one thing I've always, that always separates my parents from everybody else. You can ask my wife, up to today, when God do something for my dad or my mom, they will call all their kids and testify that, listen, my, your mom was sick last night. No, even so, and she couldn't sleep. And when I call on God, and God answer me, now, this is subconsciously, now, when my wife and, or my children are going to something, I will, my kids or my wife will tell you, I will say, God, if you can do it for my parents. It's because they tell me, they, they testify to me. I said, God, my wife, my mother was sick last night, but now my wife is sick. You know, that healed my mom. He becomes more relatable and he gives me the confidence because yeah. he testified. Yeah. This is why David was able to say, The Lord wow, wow, is wow. my shepherd. Because wow. he had a first hand testimony, seeing what God or hearing what God has done for his parents. Yeah. He had a first hand testimony. And that's why he went from being despair. He went from verse two, chapter 22, where he was down, to able to come out in chapter 23 and say confidently, the Lord yes, yes. is my shepherd. Wow. Then he continued. Mm. Listen, it is very, very important about you testifying about the goodness of God. Because especially to your own household, Remember in Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, the Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. A lot of people always talk right there. And the Bible says, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony. It, it is, it's not, it's 
by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. If you want your kids to be confident in what God says, if you want your kids to have God by themselves, yes. you need to speak and testify that child, when I was going through, this is what God did for me. And when they get to that position, because everybody will get to that position, they will be able to say, God, if you can do it for my father, yeah. you will do it for me. Amen. And they will have the confidence to say, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. And watch this. He said, I shall not want. Mm. He didn't say, David, definitely in chapter 22, David was wanting something. Yeah. Oh, help me, Lord. Chapter 22, he was wanting something. The want has not yet been materialized. But he said, I have a great, the great shepherd. I shall not want. What does that mean? He said, my confidence is on, my, on the shepherd of my soul. Yeah. Everything I need, he will give it to me. Yeah. That is why he says, I shall not want. He said, Everything I need. Listen, let me let me help somebody. God is never late. Is never. He has never been late. He would never be late. You might be taking many many years for you, but God is still right on time. He says. He says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall have want. I will not lack nothing. Because he will take me to a place of content. Yes. Watch this. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. A green pasture represents a place of rest. Yes. A green pasture replace, represents a place of feeding. Yes. It repre represents a place of security. Mm -hmm. Watch this. A green pasture is always found in the middle of a wilderness. Mm. And it takes a skilled shepherd okay. to know where green pasture is. I was listening to a preacher. He, said, he was talking about this. He said, a shepherd, sometimes shepherds will go far ahead of their sheep to look for a green pasture. And then that's how he brings them the devil said, he maketh me to lie down in green pasture. Amen. He takes me to a place, we're going to call this place a valley of just enough. Amen. Wow. He takes me to a place of just enough. Listen, David started from a place of confidence. And God took him to a place of just enough. David said that every necessity of life that I need, my shepherd will provide it for me. I always, tell, I always tell people this. Because I am saved and I know God, there are some things that my kids will never want. My kids will never want a they, can, they will never want a place to live. Okay. They will never be worried about that. Okay. They will not be worried about food. They will not be worried about clothes. Okay. They will not be worried about shoes. Okay. Because it is my responsibility as a father yes. to okay. provide for them. Amen. So those things, they don't need to pray about it. Amen. I wish somebody would catch this revelation. Amen. They don't need to pray about those things. Yes. They all what they have is confidence that my daddy will provide this for me. Yes. All what they say is that daddy, I need more shoes. I, and I say it, but when it comes to buying expensive things, mm -hmm. like they want to buy a 300 grand Nike, mm -hmm. they, will, they, they don't have to worry about it because they have to pray about it. Mm -hmm. They have to ask about it. Mm -hmm. They have to say, Daddy, this 300 Nike, Nike is good, and I want it. Even though I have the money, I'm like, 300 dollars? If I take it to Foot Locker, you might buy three more shoes for 300 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but they have to pray about it. God is our heavenly father. Yeah. Listen, David understood this, that because I, my shepherd holds everything, I, there are things I don't have to worry about. Okay. I don't have to worry about how, how am I going to pay my bills. Because the shepherd knows that you need to pay your bills. Oh, yeah. I don't have to worry about 
How am I going to pay my rent? Because the shepherd knows you. he's not going to put you out. Your father knows that, and he will take care of it. Hallelujah. He knows it. He will take care of it. That's why he said he took me to the great pasture. He took me to the he, he took me to the great pasture, a pasture where I can eat. Yes. What's this? He did not only take him to a good pasture. He led him beside a still water. Wow, I like that. Okay, let, 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 me, let me say something. Let me say something. Let me say something about still water. Okay. Let me give you something about sheep that most people don't know. Sheep do not drink from noisy water. Oh, yeah, I know that. I know that. It scares them. It scares them. You can take sheep. So a noisy water, and they would they would starve to death or dehydrate themselves because they can't drink from this water. Water represents trouble in the Bible. Uh-oh. Noisy water represents much trouble. Yeah. But God says that Bible said, David said, "The Lord will take you to a place where you will have water to drink. Yeah. You're not going to be worried about the noise around you." The, 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 the noise, the pain, the struggle, it will give you a critique to a place of context that you are able to drink for your soul. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, me. He leaded me to the side of the sea water. Listen. Watch, watch this. He restores my soul. Thank you, Lord. Restoration means when something is being restored, means to be bring back, bring back. or to rescue. Okay. You want to bring back what that was not there no more, that used to be there, mm. and that's not there no more. Thank you, Lord. I'm a, I'm a computer guy. You delete a file, okay. you have to find a way to restore it. Uh-oh. Right? If you don't restore it, you will never get it back again. Mm. Right? He says, It brings me. Back or restore something, someone have taken from me. Thank you, now let's take it a little bit spiritual. The Bible says we were lost in sin, yeah. and because we were lost in sin, we were separated from God. Right. But Jesus, ah. being faithful, you, knew that there's no way we can come back to Him. Thank we can come back to the Father unless yeah. He step out from His throne. Right. And come to this world yes. and pay the price wow. to restore you back to the fire. Yes. Watch this. The, David, David started with he, he cleared me to a great pasture. Let me let me let me let me let me explain that a little bit. Great pasture is a place to eat, right? Yes. He gave me the word to eat. Mm. And then because he gave the word for them to eat, he was able to restore them back. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Watch this. He says, he, he led me. He says, he spiritually, physically, the what you eat is, he, he, the what you eat, thank you, thank you. Physically, the what you eat is the green pasture. Okay. One thing about sheep is this. Sheep eat and they eat. When they get to a pasture, they eat it until they finish eating it. But the Bible says, God did not only give them physical things to eat. David said, he gave me a spiritual food. And the spiritual food restored back my soul. My soul that has been divided. Because I was eating from God now, from the word of God. Listen, how beautiful to eat from the word of God. One thing I just found out notice again is this. Before I thought it was only Jeremiah that God told to eat the word. God told Jeremiah and he told Ezekiel, eat the scroll. Eat it. And when he, the Bible says, Ezekiel said, after I ate the scroll, it was like honey to me. Do you know honey is the holy food that can never go bad? That's true. <laughs> honey is the holy food. That will never go there. And 
Then Ezekiel said, it's like honey to me. And now watch this. And then the Holy Spirit reminded me of Isaiah 55, verse 11. Watch this. Isaiah 55, 11 says, mm. So shall my word be that goeth forth oh. out of my mouth. Uh -huh. It shall not return unto me void, but it oh, shall yeah. accomplish what which I please, and it shall prosper in the things where I say it to. Mm. The word God, God says, My word will never go back because I spoke it, and it will never go back. You will never Amen. go back. Amen. If, Amen. Listen, it was the same word my parents used. <laughs> that it worked for them. Yeah. And the same word is still in the atmosphere Thank waiting you. for me. And the same word will be in the atmosphere waiting for my children. Thank because you. his word yes. never, never goes back. Amen. 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 Then Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16 says this. It says, he said, can you put it off for me for uh, Brother King? Jeremiah 6, 15, 16 says, Thy words were found, mm -hmm. and I did hit them. And thy words was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Yeah. He said, it's your word that was, that made my heart rejoice. Mm. And I called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Yes. It's word. As green pasture bring restoration to a sheep, the word of God bring restoration to the souls of those that believe in God. Watch this. And David said, it leads me in the paths of righteousness. Let me explain righteous messages. Righteousness means to be in the right standing with God. That's what righteousness means. Yeah, to be in the right standing with God. Yeah. I'm going to help somebody. You cannot be in the right standing with God by what you do. That's right. You cannot That's be right. in the right standing with God That's by your right. own efforts. That's right. By your own strength. Mm -hmm. By your own desire. That's right. A lot of people keep on trying to stay away from sin. And the more they try to stay away from the sin by themselves, by their own self, mm -hmm. the more they sin. Brapo says something. He said, every time I try to do right, I do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. It's because when you try to, when you try to do right, be, be in right standing with God, it becomes so hard for you. God has put somebody in place to be in the right standing with God for you. Yeah. Listen, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Mm -hmm. This will help somebody. He said, oh, yes. For he yes. has made him to be yes. sin for us. Yes. God made Christ to be sin for us. Right. Who knew no sin? Mm -hmm. That we might be made the right. Look at that. Wow. That's, that's the icing on the He said, That we might be made the righteousness. Yes. He said, God took his, uh, the sin. So, when you keep on trying and trying and trying, you cannot make it yourself. That's right. What you need to do is allow God to step in into you. That's because right. when Christ steps into you, God does not see you. He sees Christ, That's his right. son that died That's on the right. cross. That's and because right. he sees his son that died on the cross, he yeah. said, you are in the right standing yeah. with me. Listen, you are in the right standing with me. You, you don't. A lot of people, they struggle, and we struggle, and we struggle. There's a lot of legalism in Christianity today. Oh, I, I'm struggling to do this. I'm struggling to do this. I'm struggling to do this. And God, Christ is just sitting down in heaven and saying, why are you struggling? I told you, I take that for you. Yeah. <laughs> Lay down your body upon me. Yeah. Cast your cares upon me. You, Put your trouble upon me. Yeah. Put that pain upon me. Yeah. The Bible says Jesus Christ became sin so that we can be in the right standing with Christ, Amen. with God. Amen. We do not have to do it ourselves. Yes, Lord, thank you. Jesus Christ says, I have done it. We, we sometimes it's so hard for us to receive the grace of God, which is so free. Listen, this is what helped me to live a freedom life. My wife always say, your face is so crazy. Or she sometimes she say, 
You don't like anybody else. <laughs> I understand the freedom that God gave to me. The Bible says, if the Son <coughs> sets you free, you will be free indeed. Thank you, Lord. So why is it that I have to struggle when God has set me free? You don't have to struggle when he sets you free. I don't have to struggle. You got to believe that. I, I'm standing on that he set me free. Yes, thank you, Lord. Free. Every day of the every day of the week, yes. every hour of the yes. week, every yes. minute of the week, yes. every yes. seconds of the week, yes. because I'm in Christ, I'm always in the right standing with God. Amen. 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 Always. That's it. Always. That's always. It. always. Because I'm in Christ. That's right. That's right. I'm always in right standing with God. Always in right standing with Christ. Amen. 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 For verse 4 saying, huh, this is this is this is this this is so good. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. David now paints a different picture. <laughs> From verse 1, we saw a confident David. Verse 2, we saw David that was taken to a valley of just enough. I want you to pay attention to this. He went from the, a confident David to a valley of just enough. Now, verse 4, he, he says, Although I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Let's call this a valley of not enough. Mm -hmm. David switched to a place of despair, sure. a place where there is no comfort, a place of darkness, a place of dryness. A place of struggle. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, a valley is the lowest area between two mountains mm -hmm. or hills. Amen. A valley is the lowest place, is the only area between two mountains. A valley, when it is hard in the, on, top of the, on top of the hill, mm -hmm. it is harder Ooh. in the valley. Okay. When it is cold on top of the hill, mm -hmm. it is colder in the valley. The valley is a place where you are vulnerable to attacks. A valley is a place where sickness happens. A valley is a place where trouble happens. A valley is a place where difficulties you happen. Some of the things that you are going through right now, a lot of, some of us are going through a valley right now. Some of, a lot of us are going through a place where it is not so comfortable. And if you are not going through a valley right now, I have a good news for you. Keep living. You will get to a valley. Everybody will get to a valley. Everybody will be through a valley. Everybody will go through a valley. But the problem is this. A lot of people have been made to believe that when you are going through the valley, God is not with you. That's not true. That is the lie that you have always believed. Lie that the devil was telling, oh, because you are going through, God is not with you. Because you are you are struggling, God is not with you. Because you have sickness in your body, God is not with you. Because there's a pain in your life, God is not with you. But David knew differently. He said, even when I am in the valley yes. of a shadow, of, of the shadow of death, yes. he said, I will fear no evil. Watch this, watch this. Yes. There's a reason why David said, I will fear no evil. Because he said, because I know my shepherd is with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. He said, because Thank I know you, God. that God is with me. God is with watch me. this, watch this. Verse 2 of Psalm 23. And verse 3 of Psalm 23. David was saying that he leaded me. My shepherd was leading me. Do you know if there's a possibility that it was God that led him to that valley? It was, listen, it says, I want to, I'm going to give you two possibilities from, from verse 4. God led him to that valley. How do I know that? In Matthew chapter 14, I believe. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. It was the story of Jesus walking upon the sea. The story was so unique that it was told in the four of the Gospels. But Matthew 
told us something that the other three gospels did not tell us. In verse 22 of Matthew chapter 14, what is it? It said, and straight away, Jesus constrained his disciple to get in the ship. You see the word constrain? The word constrain means he made them. Another translation says, he made them to get in the ship. And there's a reason why they didn't want to get in the ship. One reason is this, they didn't want to leave Jesus. The second reason is this, most of the disciples are fishermen. They can tell the sea that there was a storm coming. Mm. And because they can tell that the sea was a storm coming, they refused to get into the ship. Wow. But Jesus Christ, after, see, I was sitting in Concordia, he said, this is a problem, push them into the ship. Mm. Listen to this, listen to this. This is about to blow some people's mind. Oh, yeah. shit. Listen, he made them, he constrained them. Mm. God, knowing everything, Aye. knew that was a storm coming. Yeah. The disciples know that this is not the time for us to go. Come on. They know that there was stuff coming. God says, you have to get in that ship. And this is the this is the story. This is the this is the thing. This is the thing. This uh, I wish you can read that. I wish oh, I don't think this is a silly. I cannot really work on it that God gave it to me. But I'm gonna try as much as I can. Listen, you no, know, the Bible says he made them to get into the ship. And Jesus Christ didn't go with them. But watch this. Watch this. The Bible says he stood and he kept on watching them wow. as they go. Wow. Look at that. Wow. And when there was trouble, mm -hmm. he was there before they even blinked their eyes. Wow. David said, God has been leading me. He led me through the valley. Another possibility is this. Let me give you another possibility. And I'm going to move on from this. Another possibility is this. That he said, Jay, though I walk through the valley. Mm -hmm. It could be that David stepped out from the direction of the shepherd. Uh -huh. And he found himself in the valley. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It could be that David moved right away from the direction of the shepherd. Yeah. But he still found himself in the valley. But watch this. This is this is where this is where it gets good for me. It does not matter how you get to the valley. It does not matter if it was God that was leading you. It does not matter if it's because of your foolishness that you get into the problem that you are going through. It does not matter how you get into the valley. But David said, I don't care how this valley appears. The valley might just have appeared from nowhere. But listen, David could have, David might could have been in the will of God, but the valley was still there. It does not matter how the valley appeared. Okay. He says, but I know God is always with me. God is always with me. He, 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 I care less how I get to the valley. Listen, the biggest lie that Satan tells people is this. The biggest lie that Satan tells people is this. Oh, when you are going through, because it's evil, God is not there. That is a lie. Yeah. Yeah. How about, how, listen, when you are going through hell, there's a song I like that would say, that, 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 that we said when I was really young. He said, if you catch hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Watch this. Devil will tell you that. Because you are saved, you're not going to go through. Well, or you're not supposed to go through. That is a lie. That sure is. Or if you are going through sickness, or you're going through pain, or going through some evil, God is not with you. Because God is not if God is not a God of evil. That is a lie. Let me prove it to you. Isaiah 54, 45. Watch this. Isaiah 45. I'm going to prove it to you. Vicky, can you please read? Verse 7. What, I want you to read with me. I want everybody to read with me. He says, I found the light. I, I created darkness. I made peace. And create evil. 
and great evil. I, the Lord. You see, the Lord is a capital. This is God talking. He said, I, the Lord, do all these things. Listen, the God that can create evil can stay in the evil. The God that can allow darkness to happen to you will be in that darkness with you. That is why he is God. He is supreme by himself. Devil, devil will tell you, oh, because you are going through, God is not with you. In John chapter 15, don't go there. In John chapter 15, Jesus Christ says, I am the vine. He are the branches. Yes. My father is the old baby. Yes. When you get to verse 8, he says, if you abide in me, yes. you will bear more fruit. And whatever you ask in my father's name, yes. he will give to you. When you get to verse 14, he now says that the old baby sometimes go through and prune the branch. Yes. Pruning the branch it's not palatable for the branch mm -hmm. because something is being cut. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Something is being cut when you cut the branch, but the pruning is for your good. Yes. It's for the branch good. Yes. It's for the branch to have more nutrients to produce. Yes. But okay. at the time of pruning, there must sometimes there's blood shed. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, at the time that you are going through something, it is painful. Sometimes you cannot sleep at night. Sometimes you cry all night. But listen, listen, listen. This is what devil does not let you know. Do you know the closest to the husbandman, to the, to the, to the branch, is doing pruning? The closest to God, to you, is when you are going through. When you is pruning you. When he's taking away your the past, that's oh, dead. Yeah. When he's trying to make you, and that is why, that is why I like the Bible. I like the Bible. I like the Bible. Listen, the Bible says this is in Hebrew chapter four. Okay. Hebrew chapter four. The Bible says verse fifteen. For we do not have an high priest which cannot be touched okay. with the feeling of our infirmities, right. but was in all point tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly. Unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in help in time of need. Yeah. Taking, can you put Hebrew down 14? Can you make it a message? I want you to see under translation. Okay. See under translation and see what God says. Okay. Watch this. The message version. It says, mm. I says, it says, now that we know that we have Jesus, uh -huh. this great high priest mm. with ready access to God, let not Let's not let it slip through our finger. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. Wow. He knows what you're going through. He feels what you're going through. He, he, when you cry, he cry. Do you know why I know? The book of Psalms says that he collects your tears and he puts it in a bottle. When you are in pain, he's in pain. Do you know why I know? Because he said we should be a pain bearer for our brethren. He when you are going through, he's going through with you. He is never leaving you alone. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. What you think is painful for you, he knows about it. Mm -hmm. I did not ask him, why is God? Listen, the problem is this. A lot of us don't want pain. Understandably. A lot of us don't want to go to the valley of shadow of death. Understandably, and the reason is it we don't want to go. A lot of us pray some pray a prayer a prayer and pray at this. Mm. When we get into trouble, yes. the first thing that people do is God, please get me out. Mm -hmm. And you keep on saying, God, give me out. Uh. And it's a good prayer. But after a while, you need to change your prayer. Oh. Amen. God, show me what you want me to show me from oh, this problem. Okay. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Listen, James chapter 1, verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. He says, my brethren. Uh, somebody's going to get messed up on this. James chapter 1, verse 2. He said, my brethren, 
Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh, I'm supposed to be happy because I'm going to the back of the okay? He said, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Watch this. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith will get patience. Yes. People, verse 4 is the key part of this that collected. He said, But let patience have a perfect work that he may be perfect and entire. Wanting nothing. If you are patient in what you're going through, if you allow patience to drive its course in your, in your situation, the Bible says at the end of it, at the outskirts of it, you will never want nothing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you allow patience, mm -hmm. if you allow patience to do his job, Amen. if you listen, it is not always a good prayer that God deliver me. It's always good to say, God, what do you want to learn from this situation? Amen. I'm gonna move on. My brother told me a story about a lady. She was at the job. She was the only lady that works right there. And she was walking among beds. And they, every time they harass her, they keep on harassing her. Mm -hmm. And she keep on praying, God, get me out of this place. HR was not helping her. God, get me out of this place. God, I need to be out of this place. Yeah. She looked for a job. She couldn't find a job. But she couldn't quit because she got bills to pay. Yeah. Say, God, get me out of this place. And after a while, she stopped praying that God, get me out. She said, God, what do you want me to learn from this situation? Oh. And God said, yes, you just asked the right, asked me the right question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God says, all what I need you to do is to testify of my goodness. Oh. Testify oh. of your grace. Oh. So uh, every time they come wow. to harass her, all what she do is testify of the goodness. Yeah. Every time they come to manipulate her, all yeah. what she did, she testified of grace. A week after she started testifying of the goodness, yeah. the guy, the chief of the people that harassed her, oh. went to the doctor and they found that the guy has stage oh. 4 cancer. Oh. The guy found out that he has stage 4 cancer. Oh. While he was in the hospital, she remembered the testimony of this lady. Wow. And while he was in the hospital, he gave his life to Christ. Even though he died. But wow. this guy was saved at the end. Oh, but God yeah, says, oh, it was, yeah. this is why I didn't want to take you out. Because oh, I had him in mind oh, to save his soul. Oh, Listen, oh, yeah. don't rush to get away. Because hey. God is there with you. There's a reason why God Thank is you. leading you through the valley of shadow of death. Yes, yes Lord. Thank you, Father. He said, I will fear no evil. Yes. For thou oh, art with me. <laughs> Watch this. I've also heard that it says, God, when you are going through, God is punishing you. Oh. The psalmist says, for, your, for his rod mm -hmm. and staff comfort me. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, can that be punishment from God? Yes. He said, the rod and your staff you, is comforting me. You, God does not beat you when you're down. No, he does not. He does not beat you when you're down. He does not beat you when you are going through this road. <laughs> and the staff, the road and the staff is what he used to get the, um, the, the enemy. But he says, he comforts me. Thank you. Woo! I wish I could explain more of this, but my time is gone. He said, the road and the staff. But watch this. I like, I like verse 5. Verse 5 says, verse 5 says, thou Prepared a table before me. The presence of my enemy. Watch this. After you allow patience to do its perfect will, at the end of every trouble, at the end of every pain, God will set a table before your enemies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. David said, David said, David said, he made a spread in the presence of my enemy. Listen, the God did not kill the enemy, but God glorified him in the front of his enemy. Wow. Somebody wow. catch it. Okay, somebody will catch it. We pray that God will kill our enemy. 
But God says, I want to glorify you. I want to lift you up Lord. right there. Listen, what good is this? What good is this that they, they see you suffer, but they didn't see you being glorified? All right. Those people that everything, that sickness that thought he was suffering, God said, I will make a table in front of that sickness. Thank you, Lord. And what you eat, Thank and you what, you, what you eat to you satisfy. Thank what you, is, Lord. He says, he, oh, my time is God, help me. He said, he said, he said, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Yes. Thou anointed my head with Hallelujah. And my cup run it over. Yes. Anointing means you are consecrated for service. Hallelujah. What is the service that God is consecrating you for? The service that God is consecrating you for you to testify of his goodness. For you to say, God, you're the one that did it for me. You brought me out. He, he anointed you so that you can tell people and say, it was God. This preaching is not preaching to people is not reading the text. Preaching to people, she will say that I was down and out. But mm. God mm. brought me out. Yeah. Yeah. The doctor yeah. diagnosed me as cancer. Yeah. But God yeah. brought me yeah. out. Hallelujah. The God, yeah. I was done. Yeah. But God reversed yeah. me. Yeah. That is what God yeah. said. That is the testimony. Yeah. That is the message. Glory to God. Yeah. I'm done. Amen. I'm done. Thank Watch you. this, but I want you to imagine this with me. Thank you, Jesus. Imagine with this with me. David got up from the table. Mm -hmm. Oil pointed over him. Mm -hmm. People can see his face shining. Mm -hmm. He went from the valley, he went from a confident boat mm -hmm. to the valley of just enough. Yes. And from valley of just enough, yes. he went to a place of despair. Yes. From a place of despair, he went to a valley of more than enough. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. David now says, remember I told you, it is a one-year journey of a ship. Mm -hmm. David now says, now, it gets to a place that the valley of more than enough became a valley of just enough. Mm -hmm. That means David needs to move forward. Because God always wants to take us from glory to glory. Yes, he yeah. does not want you to be in the same yeah. position. Yeah. David got up. Watch this. Again. Watch this. Watch this. David got up. He got up. I said, we're going to start this journey again. Yeah. And he started walking. Yeah. But when he started walking, yeah. he starts to hear some step coming behind him. Uh -uh. He walks. He keeps on moving. Yeah. He hears the sound. There's some step coming behind him. Yeah. He didn't want to look back. Yeah. He said, he thought that, okay, this can be a mistake. Mm -hmm. But the more he walks, yeah. the, he hears the step. So he stop. They stop. Yeah. Okay, he said, something is wrong. He uh, go to the right, they go to the right. Uh, he go to the left, they go to the left. He move forward a little bit, yeah. they move forward. Mm -hmm. He look back, he said, who are you? He said, goodness. Ay, 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 ay. He said, goodness, my name is goodness. My death, I'm the character of God. He said, by the way, I have mercy beside me. And now, anywhere you go, we go with you. Anywhere you move, you move to me. God said, God said, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Oh, oh. Watch this, watch this. He said, how long? He said, oh. so much about you. Thank you, Lord. 
He cares so much about you. Thank you, Lord. He sees you where you are. He knows the state of your heart. And his goodness. And something about his mercy. His mercy always renewed every morning. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Thank you, Lord. Surely, goodness and his mercy Thank you, Lord. shall follow me. Oh, not so. Thank you, Lord. Watch oh. this, watch this. Let me, let me help somebody. Jesus. His goodness and his mercy now is following him. Amen. That means Amen. even when he gets back into that valley of the shadow of death, yeah. his goodness and his mercy is there. Yes. Even mama, though mama, it was mama. because of what he did, yes. his goodness mama, mama, mama. and his mercy yes. is there. Amen. Even though Amen. it was what his parents have done to him yes. that make him to go back to the valley of the shadow of death, Amen. his goodness Amen. and his mercy Amen. is with him. Amen. Not on now, he went from he went from just Amen. God be with him. Yes. Now yes. his goodness yes. and his mercy yes. shall follow him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, I want to say one more thing about shadow. The shadow of a dog cannot bite you. The shadow of a lion cannot kill you. The shadow of death can do nothing to you. Well, all right. Just a shadow. Death have no more power over you. Because surely, I have mercies upon us. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord. Thank you for Thank you, Lord. Thank you for taking us through. Yes, Lord. Thank you because we can trust you. Thank you, Lord. You are our Thank you, Lord. You are our Lord. We trust in you. You go on and take David from being confident to a value of just enough. From the value of just enough, you took him to the value of shadow of death. From the value of shadow of death, you took him to the value of more than enough. And then you cry it up with your goodness and your mercy. If you can do it for David, yes. you can do it for us. Yes. If you can do it for our parents, yes. you can do it for us. Yes. That's why we declare the Lord yes. is our shepherd yes. and we shall not want. Yes. God we give you glory yes. for being the shepherd of our soul. Lord, we glory to the Lord. We worship you. Thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yes, Amen. 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 Amen.